Uh, what we are facing in front of us is not only, of course, the challenge for Europe to keep up competitiveness with other parts of the world. And uh, being a, a group spokesman for the EU 2020, I work with this daily and see the problems we have. But also, um, also a number of, of very important choices we have to make when it comes to legislation and the future of the internet and the future of the business and also the future not only of the market but of the human beings and, and the human rights for those people that are affected or participate in any way in the ICT activity. The great boost in quality of life in jobs, in enterprises, in towns, in and whole industries are built on the back of great innovations, innovations like electricity and highways and sewage. And it's now clear that the current and next waves of great innovations are mostly related to ICT. If we want a strong future for Europe, and that is no question about, uh, we need effective use and development of ICT. Currently extending business from member states to another may create 2 million euros additional cost for a company due to diverging rules and regulations in the member states. We in industry, we have now for more than two years advocated very strongly that we need digital single market. The creation of digital single market by 2015 would yield a 4% point growth in the European GDP by 2020. European cable networks contain over 100,000 root kilometer of optical fiber. All over Europe, cable operators have rolled out DOCSIS 3 technology over, their, over these hybrid systems. And our most popular products with consumers today are faster than DSL with speeds at 25 to 30 megabits. Much of Europe today is covered by at least two fixed infrastructures and often three mobile broadband providers. In those regions where that's not the case, of course, public funding can help. But where there's actual and potential for real infrastructure competition, funding has no place and regulatory intervention, in our view at least, should be reduced to the minimum necessary. While internet is playing an extraordinary part in shaping the society, we have to keep in mind that it has not been created with security in mind. Cybersecurity threats have increased significantly over the past five years and are evolving to the point where they pose a significant threat to both private and government institutions. While we are aiming at building and financing the digital highways, I believe decision makers should require the highest levels of network security in order to design robust and reliable networks. Information security, information and internet security is really, really hard. It is because there are so many links in the chain that, that some parts are going to be weak and easily attacked. There are always going to be people out there fooling the users somehow. Unfortunately, education is really not the answer. It isn't grandma's fault that she's going to the wrong site. It's poor engineering. And it's hard to get that engineering right. We're much better at building bridges than we are building secure computers. And we're going to have to keep working on it. Part of the problem is that people pretty much just want to drive across a bridge. When you get a computer, you keep saying, oh, I want it to do this and this and this. You keep changing what we're aiming for. And it's very hard to engineer something that actually settles down and gets secure. What we can see today is that our society changes fundamentally because the way that we communicate changes so fundamentally. And this has implications on how we live how we um, work, how we think, how we um, look at main concerns of society. Today, you're not that much worried if you don't have fresh bread in your house. You're worried if your internet access is down. That's what worries you because communication, access to that communication is become a fundamental tool in living together and living together in Europe. Two years ago, I thought it was clear cut that demand for bandwidth would steadily rise and that therefore the business case for fibre, for example, would progressively improve. Um, I'm less sure now. I will access the internet through say, a smartphone at home, even though there's a computer a few metres away. Some of the behavioural changes and the, the screen size mean that you need less bandwidth. A very important tool is a better use of our spectrum. To get there will demand a wide range of things. 
keeping the 2013 deadline for freeing up the 800 megahertz band, better coordination and more harmonization uh, also to prevent interference, auctions that must allow for the entry of more operators in the lower bands, banning hoarding, huge investments, spectrum for research and innovation in the bands made available by the transition to the DVB-T2 technology. We are convinced that the effective competition, sustainable competition, plays a very important role and is the key driver uh, to do so. If you want to have competition, you will hear from competitors there are two things they want. Regulatory certainty, whatever you regulate, but be clear about it. And secondly, consistency, don't change it in three years' time. Regulatory certainty is key, but as we have seen in some countries, it may lead to foreclosure of new entrants. It's been quite surprising in, in about the last uh, year, uh, two years perhaps, that we've started to see quite a uh, difference in OECD countries' approaches to uh, broadband infrastructure. On the one side of the chart, you have what I call the end-to-end infrastructure competition model, which, which has largely been the model that we've had uh, in the OECD since we introduced competition. Moving across the chart, you have uh, the European, mostly the European countries. You have uh, governments, uh, regulators using tools like uh, functional separation, uh, operational separation, as well as unbundling, as well as end-to-end -end competition that we've heard about. And then, if you, you know, on the end of that chart, you have another set of countries. And they include, um, at the top, Australia and New Zealand, which are introducing a kind of uh, structurally separated market. It has been many times demonstrated that ICT can play a crucial role in driving competitiveness, increasing job creation, and supporting better quality communications for businesses and for citizens alike. Digital inclusion leads to social inclusion for individuals, and digital inclusion has been seen to provide many benefits including significant savings for government, improved academic performance, better access to vital services and overall positive impact on GDP. We believe that it is very important that there are central policies and guidelines on an EU level that bring some clarity and predictability in the countries where we operate. Basic principle for spectrum allocation should be to pr promote competition and to create sound market structures in the uh, local markets. We think that the market is and should be allowed to be as flexible as possible and uh, that way will uh, foster the, the, the most efficient competition in this very dynamic area. Broadband extension, fixed and mobile broadband extension is, and the deployment of new generation networks is by far the most important strategic challenge that the telecom sector, that the European telecom sector is facing right now. But this is a political challenge for the European Union and for Europe as a whole. And we need to define the role that Europe wants to play in the internet and how to tackle from the European perspective, the challenges of internet in the global world.